Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. We're very happy to have you back with us here on Human Humane Architecture, broadcasting live from our low-hanging fruit, uh, plentiful paradisal islands of Hawaii with DeSoto Brown and Martin Despang. And we got everything here, right? Well, you, yeah, we, we think we do. Even picture number one? Even think we, we got a wonderful building right in the center. Yeah. That's what we're going to be talking about. That's the Diamond Head Beach Hotel. All and right. it's indicative All right. of what we're talking about this So week. what's the next picture? So we got everything, even? We got pyramids. Do we? Do we Let's, have pyramids? Do I see any up there in that picture? Well, we I'm don't not, see any I'm easily. Sure. We think of pyramids as like what the ancient Egyptians had. But so maybe, maybe we got we look it. Closer, Okay, let's go to our ninth island. All right. Next picture. Yeah. And we have to explain this is how the locals call Las Vegas. That's exactly right. Because, because that's where there are many go. Eight major Hawaiian islands, and this is the one that you go to after you've been there, in the other ones. There's direct flights to it. Oh, yeah. And I happened to be there because uh, we were published along with this uh, French uh, interior designer, Patrick Jouin, who did this wonderful um, um, reef inspired, by the way, top right picture. Um, bar and lounge in the V Hotel, which is part of the, unfortunately, recently tragic Mandalay Bay because of the right, shooting. Right, right, And this is straight in front of that pyramid called the Luxor. Yes. And so that's what you see there. And the next picture, and we were talking that the, uh, the Egyptian pyramid is the epitome of... A solidity. It's yeah. solid inside. There's very little open space. Exactly. But we, not this one. We said, you know, the little tombs there in there or something, the mummies, right. which we had this discussion. Is they right. even, there, there aren't any there, mummies in yeah. there, but there are just some little some mummy little caves, chambers. Some laboratory chambers. Right, or exactly. Some, some cages in there. But, but this one here is Corporate America branding, rebranding a pyramid. Right. And this is hollow because it's got the atrium. So all the hotel rooms are basically suspended from trusses in the corners and so we went because we want to learn so we went into these egress staircases they're all enclosed and this is the detail this is the scariest welding I've ever seen in a while and I thought God let there not be a fire in the building because in the previous show we had another yeah. building on Vegas that was on yeah. fire right right yeah so this is this is the antithesis of, of a pyramid of solidity of that exactly right. and also right. in another way because you've been there too next picture yes. what happened to you well when you go in these rooms you want to walk over and look out the window and without thinking you walk into and bang your head against the glass because it's tilted. Ouch. Ouch. Yeah. And you see people's <laughs> prints of foreheads and noses and stuff against the glass. Yeah. And another criticism, uh, next picture on, on my side here as the architect is that this thing is beaten by the sun the whole time. So the pyramid, again, this sort yeah. of crazy antithesis. So the, the sun god, originally, that Correct. was involved. I don't know, here is the air conditioning god. God, and it just and is it's throwing energy out yeah, all the time. Versus because this theory of the original theory, where it sort of is a cosmic power plant. Exactly. Like well, that. this is not generating power. No, it is taking is, power away. This is powered by the oil industry. And as you said, too, it's sending out that beam of laser light every night. That's <laughs> exactly. Spending energy. And to the left, uh, you know, that facade gets pounded by the elements, by the sun and the rain, every drop of rain. So you can see the, the, the glass going bad at some point. And next picture, we always have nice suggestions for retrofitting. This is a product that I, you know, in many ways, the, they're products that are too good to be true. So they're not right. really become mainstream. So right. it takes a while. This is originally, there's a little bit of a, my original culture, patriotism, a German company called Glaswerke Arnold. And they created this product, Volta Lux. And then and a Spanish company is now in business with that. It's called Onyx Glass. And it's basically baked on glass photovoltaic fritting. So these dots and different patterns you can make. So we're suggesting to retrofit that pyramid. Yeah. Though, and so it can create its own energy. So it becomes its own power plant using and, this analogy. And those, that element of uh, the, the photovoltaic material is also a shading factor. All right. But that's true, yeah. And let's but let's go back to our other islands yeah, okay. here. Next picture, back and to this our is, island. Exactly, and this is uh, my dear professor and colleague uh, Keith Sawyers, who together with my other professor. Uh, Homo Pewterball and another colleague have done this great um, uh, introduction to uh, structural systems. So here they introduce us to what we're going to talk about today, to the phenomenon of battered and buttressed. Mm -hmm. Battered we have at the very top and buttressed we have at the bottom left. And battered you can see, you were saying our termites unfortunately don't do that, but where oh, they originally yeah. come from in Africa, they built these mounds. Yeah, they're, they're, and these mounds are thicker at the base right. and thinner at the top. So right. They 
right. totally figured out. Right. It's also very bioclimatic and easy breezy, mm -hmm. everything that we want. Everything that we like. Yeah, exactly. We, we like, like the termites. Exactly. So um, next picture is then, uh, in, in previous show, you pointed out that the indigenous sort of had uh, dealt with that. As well, right. And one of the things we just pointed out is that things that are wider at the base are more mm -hmm, stable. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so a wall, a stone wall that's particularly dry wall or, mm -hmm. or dry stack, mm -hmm. wider at the base means that it is more stable. So these walls at the uh, Center for Hawaiian Studies at the University of Hawaii are mimicking the way walls were built for really big heiau exactly. that were wider yeah, at yeah. the base. And this is typical for 60s, and this is us with World Bruder here touring it, uh, was the glorious interpretation of indigenous as culture, not imitation. That right. was 60s was interpretation versus imitation, which we like to do these days. Yes. Another show we found these walls, next picture. Yes, so when we went out to Makaha, you went and I went, and we discovered these remnant walls of the now vanished Makaha Valley Inn, mm -hmm. and they too have this battered, wider at the base, tapering up to the top motif. Yeah that is probably mimicking ancient Hawaiian culture. Exactly, and they also did it to a column, and the next picture we also see that at another project here yes. that we've been featured as one of our favorites. This is Pete Wimberley's Bank of Hawaii, that and, and the top right that we featured in other shows, that unfortunately this plinth isn't there anymore, as I like to say, got cheesecaked. Yes, it did. It looks pretty corporate American uh, general and not that specific anymore. And here, as you pointed out, this nice sort of, again, getting thinner, mm -hmm. To the top columns, which reminds us of another even more prominent yeah. building. Next picture. And that is the that? Hawaii State Capitol building. Mm -hmm. And we've got two elements going on there. The, the columns are battered in that they are wider and tapering towards the top. And then the two chambers on either side also have that same format. Those, as we have discussed, is not just purely for decorative effect, although they do mimic uh, a naturally occurring form, which we'll look at later. But they also do have this function of being bigger at the bottom, and you can accommodate more people down there where you've got the, the legislators and the senators well, sitting. And, and as the picture on the top right shows, you can experience that lively, spatially, yes. as sitting there. So it's not right. that as lick and stick on, on the no. surface. No. It's essential. You feel it, right? Right. And Will Bruder called, after having seen it, he called this the best capital in the United States that he has ever seen. And this is not just because of the way it looks, it's the way it functions. functions. I've been doing the women's walk a while ago, and I experienced this power of democracy yes. and people standing up in there yes. and expressing themselves right, in as, that open courtyard as the amendments tell us we right. should do right, right. I mean, this is right, this right, is right. great it functions very well and again and, and again they do these sort of elements the the Faden uh, Atlas um, uh, the, the Faden city guide basically th that has this building in yeah. there it basically points out in a very sort of you know precise you know short but sweet way it says the the symbolism of this project has been uh, controversially discussed ever since. And I think it it's has. great. Like, true modernism is you can see these literal energies mm -hmm. in there or not. It's up to you. That's right. Whereas postmodernism shoves it in your face. Exactly. You have to look at it this way. That's you right. don't have another choice, right? right? This is more liberal, which yes. democracy should be, yes. right? I agree. So next picture, one of my experiences with this, and this is the, the term, or the, the phenomenon of basically batter it, is uh, still the tallest, uh, because we want to get to tall buildings because we have yeah. a lot of them on the island here, and this is in Chicago. This is Burnham's uh, 1893 Manatnock building, and it's a solid, stereotomic, monolithic high-rise out of brick. Right. And as you see us with our merging uh, talents down there, it's a, we observe and are fascinated by the six feet thick walls yeah. at the base, and I think they go up to like three feet or something like right. that. So it right. basically does what the walls do as a building. Exactly, and this is all before the use of steel skeletal exactly. girders well, on the inside that of the building. Follow that because Mies van der Rohe then built Lakeshore Drive yeah. apartments as the most prominent because he right. said, "Well, this is make, doesn't make sense. Too expensive. Let's use modern technology, right. steel and glass." And correct, and that's where we are now. So, and let's go and search for uh, towers that implement these things here. Right. And we had already found one a while ago when we were talking about the Hilton Hawaiian Village, Kaiser's Mainstream Hawaii, the Astor Tower here. Uh, excuse me, the Lagoon Tower, um, uh, pretty much by Edwin Bauer. Also a show with John Williams about that. And we pointed out that this, there are these sort of pilasters 
yep. that taper. And you can see this being inspired yes. by the banyan tree root. Exactly. But again, you don't have to see that. There's also a performative uh, mm -hmm. benefit for that from the from the visitor's side. If you want a balcony or lanai that's more secluded, more protected, you go to the bottom of the building. If you want one that's more floating there in space, right. you go. Correct. So there isn't just a decorative no. benefit. And the banyan roots are not just decorative either. Exactly. They are there to hold up the tree. Absolutely. So it took that, great point, it took right. this an analogy sort of literal because mm -hmm. it's not a literal orange no, on that not. thing. No, no, it's no. a functional and a right. performative thing, right? Another uh, next picture is another building we found out. This is the Sheraton in Waikiki, which this building as the previous one, uh, the ba the basic building is straight. Yes. And but the ends of the buildings they, they play with that. So there right. are these very sculptural um, sort of um, sort of exotic uh, brutalist um, sort of gestures. One has the elevator, and the other ones are basically just the ends of the building. And they also do that. It's hard. It's hardly noticeable, but if you guys go there, you can see that. Right. And there's a third building just next to us. Which one is that? Next picture. Uh, what's our next building? What's our next here? building? It's there we go. One. We are right here downtown at the. Uh, this is the Financial Plaza. This was built as the Castle and Cook building. There is a flare at the base of the building, which probably was there for decorative purposes. But as you pointed out, I'm sure it does add stability as well. So you can see there's a little bit of widening at the base of the building. And this is a brutalist building with yeah. this textured concrete. And a very fine example of tropical brutalism. Tropical brutalism. That Timothy Schuler, who's going to be one of our hosts uh, over the summer, is going to write an article about it and also do a show with us. And this is a prime piece of architecture. Picture. And here's Will Bruda again last week, um, very impressed by it, also by the landscape part, Good. Uh, uh, which credits back to Lawrence Halperin, whom he had known uh, in person. Oh, so that's good. the next picture is a not so good example that you yeah. contributed. Right, and this is purely decorative. It's, we don't think that these fins really do, do a heck of a lot for this building. And if you look at the picture on the top in the middle, mm -hmm. what's kooky to me is the two facades that face outward of the building have these buttresses, mm -hmm. if you will, mm -hmm. but on the back side where you don't see things and people just park, they just left them off exactly. and they saved money. They value engineered that, that out of the building and on the front, you see these buttresses. Exactly. And that being said, let's go to the next one and look for buildings who do battered. Yeah. Are there battered buildings? Battered buildings. And here's and, one in Waikiki. Yeah. And there is one. And that's on our end, on the Diamond Head end right. of it. That was Suzanne uh, on the walking tour with me. And all of a sudden, there was a cigarette there, mm -hmm. you know, pointing out in bright yellow. Mm -hmm. And next picture. It also uh, goes into the category of a previous show, crazy cantilevering canopies, because right. look at how crazy, and they're like coming out, and then yeah. they get thinned out, and you got these notches at the slabs right. on the side, so right. very sculpturally crafted, Correct. Uh, very tectonically clear, and you know, in fact, very spectacular, and sort of it's it's interpreting the the anatomy of a, of of a pyramid, which is per mm -hmm. se you know touching the ground yes. massively. These yes. are floating that's right. pyramids. That's right. That's, 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 that's right. That's pretty cool. That is. And next picture is showing us. I uh, also want to give credits to the current uh, occupant or hotel. Um, um, user of the building. This is called the Aqua Bamboo, and you can see why. And they're basically heavily vegetating, making it an urban jungle. It's a great experience for being, you know, in a in a in a gray jungle. Right. They green it a lot. I want to give credits to that. Yeah. And next picture is our next example of that family, which right. is on the other end of Kuhio, Correct. on the Eva end. And you know the original name of and that. And the project. original name of this is the Waikiki Gateway Hotel. It is at this the split between Kuhio and Kalak. Kawa Avenue is where the Gateway Park is, and it's built in the early 1970s, and very clearly, as we can see, it's got that tapering upward, mm -hmm. so that you can clearly see, as we'll see in our next building too, those two tapered ends. Yeah, and next picture here shows how that gets celebrated in the facade. You got these sort of shadow reveals that underline the floor slabs, the one that we pointed out in the Beauty and the Beast uh, show we did a while ago that can't do any more crafts-wise. They were mm -hmm. doing them very well. And then again, they get notched out at the end mm -hmm. in a very sort of um, accentuated, uh, expressed uh, way. Mm -hmm. Next picture. And sort of he was playing with that theme of the floating zero here even more dramatically. At the bottom picture, you can see 
pretty heavy beams going Mauka Makai and then sort of thinner but still impressively tall beams uh, which are actually the bottom of these fins. Right. And so this is this is expressed structure at its best. Right. And they look um, like rafters. They I've, look like rafters that are protruding out of a traditional style home mm -hmm. or wooden buildings roof. Yeah, absolutely. And the third one of that little family here is the next picture. And have we mentioned the architect yet? We will soon. We will soon at the end of this project here, uh, of, of, uh, yeah, of these pictures here. And this is also our permanent background picture Correct. here, right? right? This is uh, in the Gold Coast area here. And that's the Diamond Head Beach Hotel. Uh, yeah, and that is a, is a condo hotel combination, a condo hotel, how they yeah. call it. And it's very skinny, so it's almost an extruded skinny yeah. tower, right? Yes. And next picture shows us that it has the same thinking as the project we pointed out yeah. some few shows ago, the which Bellevue. was the Bellevue yeah, on, right. on Alawai. Correct. Which the building is skinny, the building is oriented the same way mm -hmm. that at the top picture, the circulation is on the south, and the openings are very minimal and jealousied. Yes. So the walkways are your shading eyebrow. Correct. Whereas the bottom picture shows the north facade where the living rooms and the lanais are and the building always stays cool. Correct. And it is not doing the mistake that the new towers yes. do that are obsessed, overly obsessed right. with the views Correct. and do that on the expense of being hit by the exactly. west sun exactly. where the sun sets. Exactly. And then you need the AC to basically keep yourself cool. This building is biclimatically, literally and figuratively cool. And what I like about this building is, as I said, because of the way it's situated, you clearly see the tapering mm -hmm. size of it and that it is a pyramid exactly. because of the way you see it from the street. Exactly. And I, I happened to, when I wanted to take more pictures, I ran into um, uh, a tenant who turned out to be German, so there was a lot of chit-chatting going on. And, in German. And, and German, yeah. And she was confirming to me that, in fact, all the units have different sizes, square yeah. footage sizes, due Correct. to the nature of Correct. the building being taller at the bottom and to the, and that is, you know, if you think about providing a, a larger range of, you yes. know, dwelling, you know, uh, propositions, it's but pretty But as we've also discussed, too, every time you vary something like that, and you we, are and, charging, and, costing and more and money. And we will get into that touchy Correct. subject, exactly. So last, uh, next picture here, which is the last picture for this project, is also uh, referencing and tributing to um, our show about celebratory circulation, our last show, and this was actually our winner. We said this building to its best is showcasing yeah. uh, the circulation being at this sort of narrow front end. So the facade, the address, yes. the face of the facade, facade becomes the sort of uh, post-fossil uh, ascending and descending right. of the building, right? Right, right. How right. cool. How Showing cool. off the stairway. And of course, we'll mention the architect. So next picture, because until now, today we found out that the architect Joe Paul Rongstedt is Mr. Ziggurat, and until then we thought he was Mr. Skinny Towers. That's because right. most of the skinniest towers on the island, not only the square ones, but these for sure, but also some very other funky ones are by uh, authorship by Joe Paul Rongstedt. And I happen to know the building manager of this building which is Century Tower just next to the convention center. And he told me that the windows are about to go bad and need to be replaced. And I said, there we go. Please replace it exactly. with this photovoltaic glass. Right. The building's orientation is because it's ideal for that because every facade gets hit by the sun it at sure some point. It sure does, and day. it has no shading. But it, it, no, it would then because these, wherever yeah. there is opacity, it shades. Yes. And at the same time, this opacity creates energy, yeah. electricity that you can use to cover the rest of exactly. cooling. Exactly. It's need. got two positive attributes. You can basically biochromatically retrofit and our Docomomo members will like not dramatically change the yeah. appearance of the building. Yes. How cool yes. would that be? Yes. So uh, not so cool are the next couple of pictures to pour some little water into this yeah. wine here yeah. because glass towers way back and actually our first original glass tower mm -hmm. wasn't the glass tower because John Graham at the very left we ran a show about it our coolest commercial classic um, had louvers That's to right. shade the glass. Alamoana building. They unfortunately took these off yes. in the early 90s yes. and thought, you know, they can just replace it with AC. And that's the way we're still building. Yes, so the building in the bottom middle is Will Bruder at the IBM uh, Howard Hughes workshop staring at this thing, which is done by some very respected colleagues of his who have done the Apple Store in New York. But when they come here, they ran out a little bit of inspiration yeah. and do at the bottom right a picture I took while being in traffic. Just the same 
old glass tower that's basically is hit and blasted by the sun and needs to be AC'd. How that's sad right. is that? That's right. And these are the, even the square towers that the developers even think they're not sexy enough, so next picture yeah, they do other ones, right? That's right, and they make these funny shapes. And there are, as we pointed out, the architect says the left one is inspired by Hawaiian fishing. The other one, I'm lost, maybe intestines or it's something like that. It's bulging in strange ways, that's I true. I don't know what that is. So no. we would caution the young generation to be formalist, but be performatists, right. maybe. And so the next picture, on a recent trip to San Francisco here with our friend Kurt Sandburn, an almost activist journalist on the island, we drove far out to look at the skyline. And of course, we know the iconic uh, Pan American, Trans American, uh, thank you, I'll say yes. this again, pyramid from the 70s by Pereira as the architect. But now the skyline is dominated by a new one, the very tall one that you can see there. And this is the Caesar, Pelli, uh, Caesar Pelli Tower. And Caesar Pelli also did work on the islands way back, late 60s. These are the towers which are on Kapolani. Boulevard close yes, to Alawai right. and University Avenue. Both buildings meaning well and uh, certainly architecturally um, ambitious, but bioclimatically sort of not where they should be. So Will Bruder made a pitch and he matches uh, former governor uh, Abercrombie yes. to say we need a beacon, we need That's a right. tall tower, That's right. but it needs to be a, a highly performative tower That's, right. that's setting you know a standard that is top notch and, and Will says it might want to be someone like uh, Renzo Piano, which you can see the bottom right. This is a short building in London. Correct. And I want to point out just really quickly mm -hmm. that we already had an iconic tall building for much of the 20th century, which was Aloha Tower. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah. Aloha uh, at uh, Honolulu Harbor, mm -hmm. tallest building. And Absolutely. as we like to say, it was easy breezy in addition to being an icon. And it's a skinny tower, and so the, the air right. can go through that. The air went right breezy. through it. Perfect. That's yeah, right. this is our grandfather. That's our right. Easy breezy grandfather skinny it tower. Is. Very well. It is. But come on, can't, don't we have pyramids on the island? If we take one and we, we turn it really fast? Well, that's right, that's right. Well, there is a natural form that looks like that. Let's go to the next picture. And ah. that is a cone. That's mm -hmm. a volcanic cone. Mm -hmm. Those cones are formed from things being ejected from the mm -hmm. volcano, mm -hmm. and they naturally assume a, okay. this cone shape, which is stable. Yeah, and we got, we got sort of um, tempted to think about that as far as using that sort of anatomy and not right. form for Correct. building a next picture. Uh, where's that? Well, that's Primitiva. That's one of the earlier Primitivas. And we've got, you explained to me that there are two here. The one on the left was intended to be on a slope where the terraced slope could serve as um, taro terraces to mm -hmm. grow taro. And that within the tower, which is tapered, there would be a mix of uh, Hawaiian homes people, of renters, buyers, et cetera, and then again, a lot of open spaces for people to mingle. Mm -hmm. um, one of the problems with that is, however, as we've discussed, whenever you make something that's non-standard, then there's more cost mm -hmm. because you do not have standardization to be able to use, for example, the prefab pre concrete panels. Exactly. So I got in trouble with Les Campers, as you perfectly indicate already, because he said, Martin, you're violating one of the two must do's for, for efficiency and effectiveness yeah. in prefabrication. Yeah. Right. One is maximum unit size, which we did, but the other one is maximum repetition. And when every floor is different, you don't You're repeat, not repeating. Right? right? So that is critical because we're talking, we're not talking about the high end glitzy no. Howard Hughesy stuff. We're talking about the real need on the island right. is social housing. So Correct. we need to look at things very serious. And that's why Primitiva ended up being that straight uh, extruded donut Correct. at the Correct. end that we see at the, at the top yeah. right. You want to talk about the other one? And there was the other one. Yeah, the other one was in Kaka'ako, because Kaka'ako is originally which one of our emerging talents had looked into the history of the yes. place, and it was the salt pits, which Kamehameha right. School brands their part as being salt That's area, correct. right? They, they so she said, well, maybe I get inspired by that. And I said, I caution you, yes, look at that, but look at that performatively versus just formally. Right. And then again, as we just said, you know. And this is uh, the, the picture, the color picture in the middle there is basically the, the location for the one on the left is uh, basically way out west yes. to stop the sprawl Correct. because all these tenants that you already uh, um, mentioned some and another one might be UH Manoa oh, West, yeah. right? And not sure. Manoa, UH, 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 we UH West, West, Oahu. West, West Oahu, exactly. Right, right. So these could be the people who could basically sort of be com compacted 
and comprised into that cone uh, volcano Primitiva and again to as you said to keep the country country and that's right. and you do on the land what we always did and we need to do again is plant food that's right, right. because we need to eat rather than we building have, lots of small buildings so it's, again, concentrate people into yeah. larger buildings perfect yeah right. so next picture is is along the same lines of not getting <laughs> taken away from form right because right. what happened here well this is was the original Honolulu Ford building on Ala Moana and it's now a Chevrolet dealership and it had those protruding rafter-like uh, concrete beams that are sticking out. But just recently, they added these two supports on that we see mm -hmm. closest to us, mm -hmm. which again are tapered, so they are battered, but they don't really serve any function. They're just decorative. Yeah. And as you pointed out, that's probably non-structural stone that's just sort of been slapped onto yeah, yeah. drywall or something. And, and, and ornate with that ornated, as you also saw, so yeah, perfectly right, called it. So next right. picture is another positive example of proposition here. Yeah, so what is this, jungleism? What are we it's doing jungleism here? jungleism number one. That was in Waikiki way back, where our foreign uh, exchange student, Liam Tran. Hi, Liam. I hope you're doing well, as well as you did here, because she was looking at the fabric and seeing water as being the right. new oil, it right. being scarce. Right. And so she was proposing to add these sort of water towers. And the water towers are basically little power stations, fresh water stations, that um, are comprised of these horizontal bands, and they're troughs, which basically collect the water and distribute the water and they're spaced out so you see this inside out picture where you got this sliced view of, of, mm -hmm. of outside and so again it's it's from its sort of function you know and and inhibition design sort of inside out uh, design approach became a pretty interesting twisted pyramid and that way twisting is okay but Correct. it's not a formal twist it's a performative twist right exactly and what she's saying is that water is a resource to be kept rather than just dumped Absol on the ground absolutely. and to flow out to the ocean and we got rushed for the next four pictures in less than a few quickly, minutes so, we'll do it quickly. so let's look critical at that sort of urban fabric thing and look at that city that first did high rises right which is new york city and when new york city began to build big buildings in the early 1920s they came up with the idea of requiring setbacks mm -hmm. which would allow in more air and more light rather than having monolithic blocks and that is why these distinctive early 20th century buildings were constructed in New York City because of that law. And, and next picture, do we have the same circumstances we here? Would, on the no, we don't, but we have some buildings. This is the Outrigger East Hotel, mm. and it's got that same kind of setback type uh, form to it, but we don't have a jungle of high rises that requires it. Plus, we have air and light and rain all year long here yeah, in yeah. our tr in our climate. So we don't really need to open up to more sun. We've yeah, got a lot of sun. Yeah. So let's do another approach, which is next picture. And you will be visiting us here yeah. on the review on Monday about uh, jungleism. And here Correct. we are with uh, sort of sections of, of skinny uh, towers that we sit in. Right. And we basically, you know, design from inside out. Correct. We, we check views, we check shading, we check few things, and then we might come up with solutions like this one here, work in progress, where you realize that when the bamboo groves mm -hmm. and the palm right. um, uh, basically right. um, groves, they get fuzzy up there That's because right. it grows leaves where there's That's most right. sun and oxygen right. and photosynthesis, right. right? That's right. So maybe buildings want to look into that, look into that too. They can be right. pretty much naked down there, easy breezy, inclusive, but maybe they want to grow things up there. Yep. The top. And that would then look like next picture, a final picture here. This is our proposition of where we are right now. We're in that building somewhere in the middle, and our monofunctional uh, downtown Honolulu basically got invaded right. by uh, skinnies. A lot of tall, skinny buildings that look like a bamboo grove or a palm grove. Exactly. So we're going to look into that on Monday. All Thanks right. for I'll being be there. there with us, and I'll hopefully we can get Jay on board as well. He That's doesn't right. know yet, but we will tell him <laughs> soon. So uh, with that, uh, thank you very much for being here thank and you. see us uh, next week. We're going to look into something. Yeah, we do next week. Don't look okay. so surprised because okay. I talked to okay. into doing yeah, yeah. every week until yes, we do until in the summer. summer. Mode. And next right. week, we want to look into Hawaii 5.0, which we have done already sporadically yes. here and there. But we yes. really want to dig in. I want to share with you what I spoiled myself with okay. because I got all the 78 yeah. DVDs as, of as, the original that's good. series. That's good. And we want to talk what a role architecture actually played what an Which important it role does. in that. it does. It does. So until then, thank you, and yeah, stay jungly, exotically tropical till then. Bye-bye.